Okay, what we've actually got now, um, I've just given this another coat of future all over. Now, I hope you can um, see uh, on the top part here, I know it's quite tricky to see it, but what we've actually got is I've, with the black, I've gone over certain panel lines again with the black wash um, just to enhance some of them because I wasn't quite happy, they weren't quite in. But I don't know if you can see too well at the moment when the flat coat is on, um, we'll get actually a nice tonal difference um, on there. But as you can see, the panel lines are, are showing up in uh, all the right places and obviously down here on the cockpit side you can see them all. So I've given it another coat of Gloss Clear, the future, all over just to really protect it and hold it all in whilst we're doing extra work. Um, all the decals are fine, there's no silvering anywhere so we're all happy with that as well. So now what we're going to do for the moment is pop the undercarriage on. Now obviously um, with the Harry there's no real uh, wheel wells anyway unless you've obviously put in resin aftermarket ones. Um, the wheels basically go together very well as I've showed in a few other tutorials about painting wheels. So they're all going to sit in fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to use our slowing, se slower, slowing, slower setting glue, and we're just going to put a drop in there and in there. Now this nose gear one, we're going to pop in first and hold. Now the thing with it is to make sure that it's square before it all sets. Um, Though we're using a CA glue, obviously you could use another type of glue. The end nose wheel there isn't improperly anyway. And then we're going to do the same with this one. That gets pushed in. Now the reason we're using the slightly slower setting glue as well is because um, we need time to get it all to level. Obviously, you know, we've got lots of wheels and we want them all to be touching the ground. I'm just going to make a little pull on a a bit of tape, you can't see it just off thing here. And all we're going to do is just drop the the little locating tabs with the CA glue in. Okay, then we'll fit those in like that. Now the beauty you can say if you were using normal glue it might move after you've actually done it, but by using a slower setting CA glue or cryo we can roughly work out how it's all going to have to be and how it's going to sit. So what we'll do is, we're just going to settle this down for the moment. Just like that. Now the outriggers are always going to be the ones which actually hold up the weight. The main gear usually doesn't, so what we want to do is make sure that that main gear, all the wheels are touching. And it's nice and square. Now at the moment they're just just off the ground a touch. So what we'll do is we're just going to pull this the main body out again. Roughly going to sit it there. Okay then all we've done we're in there and we'll make sure we're all squared up and we're all sitting okay. And there we go, we'll leave it actually on its gear like that now to dry. As I say, if you fix the two outer riggers if you wanted to, and then the nose wheel, and then as I say, put your glue in, so when it, if you like gravity holding the main wheel down onto the actual ground. Um, the other thing we're also going to do is once they're all in there, we're going to make a couple of swipes with a... Um, a little bit of sand, uh, sanding stick or sanding paper just to take the roundness off the bottoms of the wheels to make it look like there's weight on wheels. So we're going to do that as well. But the way I actually do that is I'll get a little bit of talcum powder or a tiny little bit of paint and I'll sit it down and then sit the model on. Obviously where you see the paint is the bit that he's taking off. If you're trying to work it out because it's leaning back if you like, it's very hard to get it in the right place. So there's that in there now. There. The other things we've still got to do, I haven't put the slime lines in uh, for the night navigational lights, uh, the formation lights. I'm not too happy with the colouring or the printing of the ones that come in the kit, so I'm either going to hand paint them all in or I might use another kit's one and fit them all in, so that's still to go on. Obviously navigation lights have still got to be painted and other little bits of detail which we'll pick up in a moment. Okay, so now we're going to get the pylons on. We're all sort of coming together. Um, we've got the fuel tanks here. They're still a little bit tacky, so we'll put them on afterwards. Now, 
using um, the slower setting glue, obviously we're going to do the same thing. Um, so I've got it just down outside, it's just on a bit of tape, it's a squirt. So all we do, we put, if I show you, just have cocktail stick here, a little bit of a, the glue in there. Now the trouble obviously we're using a CA glue, one is the joint is quite fragile, and secondly, um, is obviously you get sometimes a little bit of a white mark. Now that's not too much of a problem, we can get around that. Right, obviously when you're putting the actual pylons on, the, the big thick ones, it slopes up. So you'll have to actually make sure you've got it right on. So it's obviously if you hold it to how you have it, and you can see which wing it actually goes onto. So this is this one to this side. And then we just he says trying to get it in there we go bit of a click and that's in now as we we're saying because it's that the glue which takes a little bit to, of time to dry you can position it get it to how you want and then you can give it a squirt with some CA kicker when you're happy just to make sure it's all in the right place so obviously we go same with the other one have a little bit of glue. We'll see sometimes the actual locating tabs can be a bit of a, a tight fit. Like this one's proving to be. Let's that one in. the last one going on the outer there we go we have them all on then what we'll do is we'll have a look straight down at it sort of uh, get you in focus to make sure they're all level and then you can either just leave it down like that to dry off or you can give it a squirt, a squirt with CA kicker to seal it all in place so okay here's today's talking point why is it no matter how much space you have on your desk you know, I'm not being funny, I've got loads around here, I'm quite lucky, I've got a huge room and I've got a U-shaped bench and still you end up working like this where your model is in one tiny corner and you've got all your stuff laid out. Now I wish I could pan the camera around because it literally continues, as you see it here, it's the same all the way around on all three benches. So what right, as you can see we've um, progressed quite nicely um, with the Harrier build. Um, it's coming in quite nice. It's had a flat coat now. Um, we've still got some markings to go on, but I can do them at a later date. As you can see, the flat coat really changes the colour of the actual model. Um, it'll obviously lighten it once it's on. Now, I've unmasked, and to tell you the truth, um, it's one of those things I wish I had actually filmed it, but I didn't think it was going to work. I unmasked the front windscreen here, and what did I meet? completely white it had whited out somehow and I'm still not 100% sure how it happened but it's got glue underneath this front canopy here and it's gone up so if we zoom you in a minute I'll show you what I mean it was this front one here now what actually happened was um, it got uh, glue somehow managed to get underneath here now I had to cut it off um, the actual canopy off again. Let me just move this around here. Um, and then what happened, it's very hard for you to see, but this entire front was glue. It was all pitted, it was knobbly, it had air holes in it and everything. Now I didn't video it because or take photos because I was going to bin it. But then last night I thought, right, okay, well I'll sit down whilst I was watching the telly. And I sat there with a um, small piece of, I might put that there, you see, you might be able to just see, there you go, you can see it just there these little white marks. Um, if you imagine those completely covered the front half of the canopy. Um, so what I did, I sat down last night and I started off with some sanding sticks and I sanded the life out of the inside of this. I was really, really coarse cool sanding stick and I just went for it. I used a, this chunk of blue tack um, molded it all around the outside so obviously we didn't get any stress cracks in it and I just sanded the bejesus out of it completely really rough ruined the inside then basically um, working through softer 
um, everything else like that. And then I did something also that's quite rash. I got some black paint and painted the inside of it so it showed up on the outside so I knew how far I had to go to get rid of it. And I wasn't expecting to be able to do it, as I say, but, you know, it's one of those things, half the time. So I sat there using tiny little bits like this as well, and I'm chiseling away and all the way through. And I must admit, I'm quite happy. I've just got one small little mark left, as I say, which is, uh, if you can see it, it's that little one just there, look, just on the end there. Um, and I think I can live with it, to be honest. Um, I have got another Harrier kit here, luckily. Uh, and I was going to pinch the windscreen out of it and use that. But I think we've managed to save the day. And I suppose the moral here is that, you know, um, I have this saying, basically, out of every cock up comes a good idea. And you'll use that idea the more you go on. Um, for instance, you know, sometimes perhaps you've peeled some paint off when you've masked your model and you've taken the paint off of it you can go back and make that into a weathering. You know, sand off the patch, smooth it down, blow it in. So every time you get something that goes horrendously wrong with your model, instead of like, that's it, it's off to the bin, smash it up, start again, you know, and put it down. Have a sit back, have a think about it, have a break, have a pint, have a cup of coffee, whatever you're gonna do, and then think about it. And just have a go at trying to make it right. This clear part is a classic example of that. You know, I was already, you know, a bit upset, as you might imagine, been it. But sat down, watched the telly, and I've got that to a point where I'm basically happy with it. It needs obviously to be refitted and everything else like that. Um, the back one here as well, I had a tiny little bit in here. Um, I'm assuming what happened was, with all the painting and the bits of uh, pieces that were going on, um, somehow it managed to get underneath and in. But it, it really did ruin it totally. But, as you say, we spend a little bit of time putting it all right and we'll get there eventually. So that was the thing with that. Um, the other thing also I did, whilst we're talking about it, this top area, remember uh, when I was doing the wash, I put some black bits on. Well, what we're going to do now, I'll just show you again what I did. If I set this here. Okay, so you have your Harrier. Now, using the black wash, you want, don't want the dark, you want the black. Okay. Then all we did, I'll tell you what, bring this round here. Like that. And we'll bring you in a little bit. Make sure it's had a good, good shake. Because obviously it will separate. Okay, then all I did. A smallish brush. Nothing huge. Okay. And then I just blotched on little areas around like this okay and then whilst they're still wet we basically smooth them around and rub them all in let that dry a little bit just for a second okay then moisten the cloth slightly and just circular motions give that a little rub round then all you'll do, you'll give that a little depth patch, just like that. And obviously, as you can see in here, we've got it here as well. You could, obviously, if you wanted staining, just do it like that. But perhaps a little bit too strong. And we just give that a rub. Now, because this is on a dead flat coat, you're going to leave some of that behind. I don't know how well you can see that. But you see, you're getting that sort of patchy, mottly look. Um, and all we're doing is breaking up the tone, if you like, of the actual wing. But we just did a few areas like that, working all around it. Now, another great way of doing it, if you get your, your brush and say the black wash, okay, now, and we just run it down in this edge here, and that one there, just like that. And I'm showing you the wrong one here, aren't I? Okay, let's bring in a little bit more. Okay, so we've done it in there, yeah? And then all we do, get your thing, and we wipe. Okay, and you can see how we get that sort of smudgy, um, oil, leaky type look that we get. If we just do some out here on the aileron, like that. See, it doesn't have to be neat or anything else like that. 
Okay, so as we're in, in with the airflow, it's a little bit thick that area there, but don't forget we can get that all off as we want it. Okay, and as you can see that's it's a little bit wet at the moment. And then obviously, you know, if you if like that really it's a little bit too much, shall we say. So a tiny bit of moisture. Rub the cloth once you've licked it onto your hand like that and you'll take it all off, you'll feel your hand get wet, but you'll leave just enough on there. Just to work with. Just like that. And that will give you that sort of um, hydraulic -y, airflow, dirt, grime, you know, all those things you get. Just like that. And you can work then right the way across the entire model. Um, doing that entire thing to give it some heavy duty weather. Okay, so now we're going to um, show a little bit on the weathering. As I say, we're still using the black wash because it's a real dirty um, aircraft to marking. So what we do, just take it out of the bubbles at the top if you like. Yeah, okay, and we just paint it all under the underside around this area here. Okay, then if you get a dry um, cotton bud before that totally dries off just give it a second now really as we're talking to let that dry sort of um, you know dull down um, it will get lighter as it dries um, with the black also whilst we talk about it um, when I first started playing with the pigments and colors I had a choice of two now you could either have it so it went sort of like a, a charcoal you know very flat black um, or the other way of doing it was that if we had it like that we could have it with a pigment that sort of gave almost an oily look to it. Now I've gone with the oily look because it's used for weathering and obviously for the type of things originally I envisioned this thing for was for things like wheel wells, cockpits, things that get oily if you like. Um, now the thing is if you put a coat of a flat over the top of this it will kill it down anyway so don't worry about it looking too oily because it will go. Okay so we've got this on like this um, dry cocktail stick, um, cocktail stick, cotton bud even. Okay, and all we do is drag it backwards. Okay, we just literally and work slightly forward as you drag it. Remember, not wet. Well, you don't want it wet because you'll take it off instead of smearing it. And what we're, we're doing is sort of um, looking at references. Obviously, the way that the actual nozzles, because they rotate down. Um, and Harry's when they're doing a rolling takeoff and things like that they tend to pick up a lot of dirt and with the motion of it obviously going forward it pulls it all back in um, and then sort of pushes it down and you get a very nice sort of watery um, slimy sort of grimy marks and it's all like a, like a river bed um, runs backwards and I know this is going to be quite hard for you to see um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some stills off of this anyway but we're going to do the same thing so we say if I show you a little bit closer um, it's got some on there and obviously don't forget with this just keep going backwards and forwards and building it up so we'll put a little bit more around the front here just like that all over in okay give it a bit of a blow clean one yeah okay and just pull it back And obviously the more you rub and the more you pull, the more comes off. Until you get, I know it's going to be quite hard for you to see, um, but you do, you get that sort of pulled dirt look running all the way back down that I'm after. Now the other thing as well in here, where we've got the dam for the air brake, obviously I've still got to put the little um, hydraulic lever in there but we can just dirty this up for a moment using the bubbles off the top of your pot just going to work that in and grime that up because that does get lovely and grimy all in there okay so that's that done now before that totally dries off again same thing in with the cotton bud pull it around but then what will happen is it will stick to those rivets and bits and pieces in there and cause the, the mark. Now don't waste what you've just pulled out, just give that a rub around as well all over. 
and we're going to work all the way around the bottom half there doing that entire thing to the the, the entire underside around the bottom of the fuselage here where it gets that sort of dirt that works back I'm going to work it back really underneath the entire fuselage body itself um, as it runs back all right so as we can see we're now pretty close um, to the finish line um, as we can see here we've put in the the photo etch part in now I've had loads of trouble with the canopy to be honest um, the glue which we put in here unfortunately for putting in the um, photo etch part if you can see it there the actual metal uh, running through which is the detonation cord um, we had lots of trouble with that because it actually moved and then it ended up being in the wrong place and then we tried to have to get it out and it, it oh, absolute nightmare so anyway we got the front canopy in and I don't know if you can see that we've got a few little marks down on there where we were saying about where it's scratched up but that's in position now and it's locked in so at a later date I could always whip that off again and replace it with a nice um, new one um, the other thing we've done also we've got the slime lines on um, which are the um, navigational um, night navigational ones on there now originally I didn't want to use them because I found them a tiny bit grainy it's quite pixelated the way they're painted that said now they're on there they're not actually too bad um, the other way I was going to do it was obviously this front color we put on the leading edges here I was going to use those and then spray them in or hand paint them in um, but for timing I thought it would be a bit easier to um, do it uh, with the actual pixelated parts um, it's not too bad you can't really see it that much um, but as you can see we're starting to look like a harrier now it's all coming together the weathering's looking quite nice too um, I don't know how well we can actually pick this out but it's got that sort of dirt mottly you know effect of color you know we don't want to be going around now plastering it with dark patches and light patches and bits and pieces like that but we certainly wanted to be in a position where it, it's not like a block of color a block of gray also I don't know if you can see too well in there if we bring you in a bit but we've got the cockpit the seat is in there now and obviously round to the actual cockpit place what I'm going to do is uh, later on when it's all completed I'm going to actually get some photos done of it and then we'll put them in as well and uh, like you may have seen on certain parts of the site you've got you know where we did the Lancaster I'll do the same thing for this right so we've just got a few more um, little things to do what I've actually done is the blade antenna which goes on the top um, I've painted that already that's flat black just gone on there that's drying as we speak now the next big area to do is the little um, clear parts that go on the nose <coughs> excuse me one is the seeker and one is the range finder is the laser seeker and the range finder now the big one at the front on the nose that has a, a blue look to it so what we do is it's, oh, with these very old Tamiya clear which is X23 which is the clear blue all we do is use a cocktail stick okay we get a bit on the end of the uh, cocktail stick just like this okay and you have your your seeker then also you want the inside and we just put a drop um, so you can see this a bit better here we are okay so there it is this is the one so literally we're just going to put um, a drop in the middle and give it a small rub around that's quite a, a deep hole in there so give it another drop but just in the inside not the outside and what that will do is give you that blue look there you see so obviously we've done it from the inside there and then it will show nicely blue and because it's clear blue when it dries it will dry a little bit um, clear now if you haven't got a clear blue um, you could just use a normal sort of a, a medium blue like that to do that so that's that bit done and then obviously we want to do the same with the black now remember don't do the outsides because looking at your references of them the outside bits don't actually have um, a like clear glass if you like so we've got to find the seeker one as well so the same thing we get a little bit of black as we say okay and then just in the middle there is a little hole there it's a little well so you can do it 
And whilst we're doing those bits as well, if we use a tiny little bit of whoops, silver, we'll just actually do those um, the lights as well on the clear parts, which are yeah, which are Y4 and Y3 on your sprue. Um, so that's these bits over on this side. On the other side, what we'll actually do, we we'll just put a small little drop there. Same thing. Then all we do is we we'll just give that a, a bit of a puddle in the middle. Um, and then that way, when you look at it, you'll see the, the silver on the inside and obviously you'll have the clear part of the front as well. So that's that bit all done. And what I do is also when you're using these Valeros, because obviously you don't want to go blow, I just put a drop in the top other end of it, just one drop, and that way you can use it and it lasts quite a while. And then once you finish, you can just wipe it all off clean and carry on using it. But it saves having to get dishes out and various bits and pieces. Right, here's the tricky bit then. What we've got to do now is in here, if we move this out of the way a little bit. <laughs> So right, you'll all be pleased to know I've got a nice clean cutting mat coming. So it should be here in time for the next build. Um, so in here, as you say, um, we're gonna put the mirrors um, on this edge, and then obviously we're gonna put the handles as well. Now, that's using your photo etch parts. It doesn't come with the kit. So you have to use that. Now, if I get a pair of tweezers, just to show you, he says trying to get hold of these things which are okay here's your um i know it's very very hard for you to see um but here's your clear part this is a handle um and what we're going to do we're going to actually then affix this to the inside with a drop of super glue um, just to hold it in place and then the same with the mirrors then afterwards obviously the mirrors because they're silver anyway we won't have to worry about um, painting one side but we we'll just paint the back side so obviously when you look at it like this you'll be able to see the silver in the mirror and then in here because we're going to have the canopy open on this one you can actually see um, the black and it will all stand out and come to life so there we go if I put the shade over it like that you can see we've got the handles and the mirrors in there um, just like that and then we're going to let them dry and then we'll paint them black. What we're going to do now, we're going to cut this blue front lens out um, and what we'll use is our more um, deck parches as the sharper ones here and what we'll do we we'll just yep. okay, let's snip. Let that back down. then using our tacky glue We'll just throw a little bit around the top we've got here. Now don't forget this because it's PVA glue, dries totally clear. So we're just going to put a tiny little bit on the inside and around the outside of the nose, just like that. And then I'll just pop it on a finger. place like so and as you can see that goes on the front there just like that now I'll see that because it's PVA glue as we say it will dry clear so I hope you can see that it gives it that sort of blue look they have and then we're going to do just the same for the black so we just get our smaller scissors as we were saying Okay, so we'll just one, two. Then obviously don't forget with the PVA because it uh, dries clear. Don't worry about just a good blob on the inside. Okay, like so. That fits in. Now I know it, it may look a little bit white, um, if I show you here, it looks all a little bit white around the outside but that will actually dry clear as we were saying. So that's those two on. Now at this point if you're not going to touch it we can do the navigation lights. If you're still going to handle the model I would recommend not actually having the um, 
doing the navigation lights obviously that go on the wingtips will last because many a time you pick up the model you end up smudging it and then having to correct it and rectify any problems you've made so it's always best almost your last touching to do the navigation lights so really we're almost there now all we've got to do is put on um, the top uh, aerial the vane slots in there um, just moved on a little bit uh, these aerials um, the actual pit -out tubes on the uh, each side and the little yaw indicator on the top just up here they're on now um, basically uh, just a drop of super glue they're just silver base color and I have a little touch up on the top bit there but as you can see I think that no section is particularly coming to nice, uh, life very well um, whilst we're on the thing I've also painted the front edges here all black so that's ready to be going on um, so really as you can see now if we just bring you out a little bit um, we're all actually all coming to life we're getting there there we go um, really what we've got now is just the clear lights that go on the undercarriage lights have got to go on and then we're going to be having a good look round it now um, time to talk about uh, the weathering um, the wash itself and you know this might sound a bit of a, a cliche but the wash weathers um, I don't know if I'm do actually going to want to go around and respray um, and touch in all these different areas and bits and pieces with it because it does look to come to life very well and very weathered it is the thing with the wash it does weather and because we've done it over the flat coat and then put in some blotchy bits and with the scraping it's not going to need any more weathering really so I'm quite happy with the way it is um, future ones what I'm actually going to do is I'll go less on the wash if you like and I'll show you a little bit more about weathering with an airbrush I'm working through okay so um, one of the bits to go on is the little light just down here he says as he's put it somewhere here it is right okay um putting on lights like this uh, a bit tricky if you paint them just all white all you know obviously in a clear red what we got here xf27 in tamiya form um the trouble is is that you don't get that clear glass look so what i tend to do if you can see it here camera can zoom in the little peg that comes off it's always tricky working with clear parts but this little peg that's at the bottom here you can see at the bottom on my finger all I actually do is get some clear and put a drop on on a cocktail stick just on that locating peg just down the bottom just like that okay now it's a bit tricky trying to do it and show you at the same time but we'll just transfer that onto the tweezers gently and then what we want to do this is where it pings off of the rule we'll just place this in just like that okay then what we actually do is get a little bit of your clear floor gloss future um, that type of thing or you could just use a clear gloss if you've got a bottle of that around um, any type of clear as long as it is a gloss then take a very take a very fine um, uh, paintbrush with a very fine tip then get your a little bit on the end of the brush okay and then just touch and let the capillary action flow around it and you will see it change color as it blends in now because we made a little snip at the top to obviously remove it from the sprue as well we're just going to give it a little bit of gloss over the top now I honestly don't know how well you can see that or if the camera is going to be able to lock in but as you can see there I'm hoping you see you get that little tiny red dot in there which makes it look like there's a red bulb in there and keeps the rest of it clear and that's the idea behind it now if you've got any clear parts and do it that same way um, you, it, it is a good way because that the paint itself of that clear um, is quite a gluey type paint um, it should hold it there and then with the gloss it just seals it all in and makes for a nice clear um, lock if you like um, and brings it all in together okay really is the home stretch now I've picked out all the little bits um, and I've had a look over it just to making sure we're all okay and everything and the only thing that I think looks a bit odd is the front gear now looking reference photos they obviously don't get as dirty as the back one um, because obviously with the thrusting and that but what I'm going to do is I've just got a little bit of Tamiya smoke 
which is thinned down a lot and I'm just going to give it a quick rub over all over with it. Now the thing with Tamiya Smoke it, uh, it's a gloss, it's an X number so it will give a slightly glossy finish here. You might have to go round and give it a whack with some um, flat just to bring it all back into scale so to speak but all we're going to do is just going to give this a bit of a brush round everywhere just to dirty it up and the same with the outriggers as well just to give them a little bit of weather because all the smoke will actually do is just slightly weather it it won't it's not like giving it a wash it just gives it that sort of grimy effect as long as you've thinned it down quite heavily I've thinned this down so it's almost like water so you can hardly see it but uh, it does work well for that type of thing and there we have it it's basically done I'm gonna have a quick look over it and just a quick check and obviously I'll get some photos done this afternoon of it as well and obviously it'll be up tonight taking a little bit longer and to be honest this is the reason why this canopy has given me no end of trouble all round but if we just fit it there just for a second what I'm going to actually do I'm going to do it with a tiny bit of PVA glue um, I've just got to check some references to see how it actually sits but there we go it's done I hope you enjoyed the build there again um, as I say this top um, seam line that we had all that trouble with um, and we spoke about in the in the early days if I bring you in um, so you have to be a bit careful with this because it's wet in too many places um, but there we go there's that seam line we had the trouble with um, totally gone and I'm very happy with the way that actually turned out um, I've got another Harrier here and I'm hoping that our friends over at two mics are going to get me a um, a new Lyrics which is this bit here if we just pull you out a bit um, which is this part just here now um, they've done the replacement for what we call the 100% lyrics which blends in now I've got the decals obviously that were with this kit to do that um, and we're going to put them on and get them all sorted out um, with the 100% lyrics and do it as a GR9 but that's something for the future um, we've still got decals to go on this obviously we've got no numbering yet here and no nose art um, I was hoping to actually bring you um, some decals from Model Alliance but they've had some trouble at their end and their references apparently aren't exactly right so they've had to go back to the drawing board and reprint the actual um, the instructions for it so unfortunately we haven't had anything from them it would have been nice to do it but let's say these things happen so that's it um, there's a new show coming up very shortly unless you're watching this in a few months time and then there'll be one whenever um, obviously up here we've got the um, uh, Strike Eagle which will be the next build and then after that it's up to you there's a little thing on going on in the forums at the moment so check that one out but there we go let's just pop this on let's say I'll get the stills photos done but we're all done